leader of the Democratic Unionist Party, Sir Geoffrey Donaldson, has stepped down from his position with immediate effect. Donaldson has written a letter to the party chairman confirming that he has been charged with allegations of an historical sexual offence. Well, we can speak now to Talk TV chief political commentator, Peter Cardwell. Peter, those of us who are sort of news hounds heard murmurings of this a couple of hours ago when it started breaking on social media and in WhatsApp groups. What can you tell us at this stage? This is an absolutely catastrophic uh, series of events for the Democratic Unionist Party, for uh, politics in Northern Ireland, and of course, for Geoffrey Donaldson personally. Uh, he's been an MP for Lagan Valley since the, uh, for the, for the DUP, uh, since he left the Ulster Unionist Party in the early 2000s. And of course, he has now been charged with these offences, so we need to be careful about what we say, but they're historic uh, sexual offences, we know that. What we also know is that he is no longer leader of the Democratic Unionist Party. His deputy, Gavin Robinson, who's also a member of parliament, is now the leader. Uh, certainly there has been a, a lot of uh, intimidation, threats, uh, opposition to Jeffrey Donaldson for a, a number of uh, months now because of his decision with the with, after the Windsor framework, that deal on European on the European Union, to go forward and to go back into uh, devolved government in Northern Ireland, which was suspended for two years. And there will, of course, be some sort of uh, speculation, at least, although we must be careful because this is now a matter which has been charged uh, in regard to the origins of this. But of course, the PSNI, the police service from Northern Ireland, will have gathered their evidence. This is a political disaster for the DEP. Geoffrey Donaldson is someone who has taken a huge leap of faith to go into devolved government with Sinn Féin. Uh, for the last 25 years since the Belfast Agreement, there has been all sorts of off-again, on-again devolution within Northern Ireland. But Geoffrey Donaldson, who was an Ulster Unionist, previously part of David Trimble's party, walked out on the eve of the signing of the 1998 Belfast Agreement and then eventually joined the Democratic Unionist Party, of which he became leader a few years ago. After Arlene Foster, uh, this is a, a real shock, a real shock in regard to UK politics and Northern Ireland politics itself. He is someone who is has been seen as having a lot of integrity previously, but of course his reputation, even though he is charged and is innocent until proven guilty, if indeed he is, his reputation is certainly uh, uh, is certainly gone. It'll be interesting as well in terms of when a, a by-election could happen. His party, the DUP, are under a lot of pressure in his constituency of Lycan Valley in Northern Ireland, which is just outside Belfast, the main city is Lisburn within that uh, constituency, and certainly when a by-election would be held if he has to stand as an, down as an MP, which I presume he will, but that is, that's not assured. What we know is that he's suspended as a member of the DUP and that he stood down as leader. So we will see what happens in the next uh, part of in the next part of this, because it's not going to go away. Huge speculation in terms of what will happen now. Uh, Peter, uh, obviously Sir Geoffrey is uh, innocent until proved guilty. He's been charged... Uh, we don't even actually know if he denies the charges because we haven't got enough information yet, but I think we can probably assume that he does. What will the DUP... How will the DUP navigate this very, very difficult situation? How will they deal well, with it? How will they portray it to the people? They're a very split party uh, by themselves. They're very split. And uh, this was very much in evidence over the decision to go back into government with Sinn Féin. Previously, there was a man called Edwin Poots, who's now actually the Speaker of the Northern Ireland Assembly, who was very briefly, uh, for I think 21 or 22 days, the leader of the DUP. That fell apart. But there's a hardline element, and then there's a more liberal element within the DUP, and Geoffrey Donaldson was the leader of that. He's tried to unite his party. Well, we've seen other figures like Sammy Wilson, no uh, stranger to this station, to talk TV. He is the was the DUP's chief whip and a long-serving MP for East Antwerp. He stood down as chief whip. So there is real consternation within the DUP and their eight MPs, but also their members of the Assembly in Belfast. So this is very, very difficult for them. And they're very split as a party. Gavin Robinson, who is the deputy leader, who's now the acting leader, I'd be very surprised if he ends up as the leader of the DUP. But certainly, Rishi Sunak spent a lot of time trying to get the devolved government back in Northern Ireland, sorting out the uh, tail end of Brexit, what he would he would see the Windsor framework as uh, as a mechanism to certainly solve the problems of Brexit in the in the UK and all specifically in Northern Ireland. Lots of people will disagree with that and will say that that's not the case. But there was basically parliamentary consensus when the Windsor framework went through, only 29 MPs voting against it, including the DUP, although many more abstained. 
So the DUP is split. It is in real difficulty anyway. And uh, D Jeffrey Donaldson, largely from London as its leader there, rather uh, rather than in, in Northern Ireland, although leader, was leader there, of course, as well of the whole party, nonetheless was in a situation where he was holding together a very, very fragile coalition within the largest unionist party in Northern Ireland, which had seen its position fall away to being the second largest party. So previously, uh, DUP leaders like Ian Paisley, like Peter Robinson and Arlene Foster had been the first minister of Northern Ireland, but because the DUP in that kind of mandatory coalition was the uh, second largest party, ended up as uh, the de with the deputy first minister post. And Geoffrey Donaldson didn't take that. He's given it to a woman called Emma Little Pengelly, who uh, continues in that role. But it's a very, very difficult time for the DUP. They are in crisis. We also know this morning that Geoffrey Donaldson's social media accounts have been deleted. Uh, so there will be lots of speculation about this charge. We need to be careful about it. He is innocent uh, until proven guilty. But the fact that he has been arrested and someone so high profile has been arrested and indeed charged with something so controversial uh, will have been, uh, you know, the, the police service in Northern Ireland will have taken their time, will have made sure that they are absolutely sure that there are grounds at least for him to be arrested. And the fact that it has happened now after devolution has been restored is probably interesting too. Yeah, Peter, thank you ever so much. We're still, of course, joined by former Labour advisor, Matthew Laza. I mean, Matthew, it's a, when you put this in context with everything that Northern Ireland's been through over the past few years, so putting aside party politics and the difficulties the DUP mm. faces, it's a very fragile agreement there. Absolutely. We've only just been able to get Holyrood back up and running. Yes, uh, Geoffrey Donaldson Stormont. didn't... Uh, Stormont, sorry. Too much, it, yeah. too much Hollywood normally in the news. Absolutely. Uh, we only just wanted to get Stormont back up and running. Um, uh, we know that Geoffrey Donaldson isn't uh, the deputy first, board, uh, yeah, first minister yeah. there. But uh, this, this is going to have a big impact, isn't it, on Northern Irish politics? I mean, and Absolutely. rather cynically, I suppose Sinn Féin might be thinking, well, this is great. Yeah, I think what it will do, as Peter, excellent analysis there it, it said, is it's very, very destabilising for the DUP under this system um, uh, where uh, the two, if, if Stormont's going to sit and the Assembly's going to sit and the Executive's going to function, you have to have uh, the largest Unionist Party and the largest Nationalist Party, uh, which was for, you know, until this time was uh, Unionist largest and then the Nationalists, and now it's the other way around. So um, the DUP got the Deputy's uh, First Minister's job. Um, uh, they, they have to remain in. Now, uh, Geoffrey Donaldson was the uh, leader, as it were, of the more moderate faction in the, DU, in the DUP who wanted to uh, go back into the Assembly and the Executive and get it restarted. And now that he is out of the picture, if we put it like that, then that, I think, will shift the balance of power within that and make the... Uh, the I don't think we're going to see the DUP leave uh, the Executive immediately, but I think if any... You know, there are always shocks in Northern Ireland politics. Something comes along uh, which shakes things up. I think it will make it much more fragile for the DUP to stay in that. So what I think do we it, know about Geoffrey Donaldson as a guy? You know, what kind of a guy is he? He's married, is he? He's got kids? Yeah. What do we know about this? So he's married with two kids, as, as I understand it. And he's, um, you know, he's a very, if I can put it, a, a, a very sort of typical uh, Northern Ireland unionist politician, you know. Terrifying. Uh, 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 yeah, <laughs> vaguely terrifying. Didn't he serve in the military at one point? I think I he think. might well have done, but, he, but he, in the DUP, I mean, as Peter was saying, he came from the Ulster Unionists, which were the dominant force under the late David Trimble, who um, uh, got, got the peace process going. So he was he was in the, um, the DUP, where he, where he in Paisley's party to remind people who might not have Northern Ireland politics there front of their mind. And then it, what they've moved is that they've expanded as the as the uh, as the unionists have shrunk and shrunk. He jumped ship very early, uh, uh, went just after the um, the Good Friday Agreement. But he was very much seen as on the moderate wing of that party, on the more establishment wing of that party. He came from the Ulster Unionist rather than from the Paisley Church. Lifelong politician, or does he have a career? Uh, I, I think he, I think he was in the military. He's certainly been around politics okay. for a yeah, very so, long time. Uh, Amiable. Uh, a... Does he get on with people? I think that he. I think. I mean. I think that he is not seen as the most relaxed figure. Uh, in Northern Ireland <laughs> politics, nice if I can put it like that. Um, uh, but he's seen as a serious figure uh, who doesn't... Who, I mean, sometimes there's a bit of bombast in Northern Ireland politics. Mm. You know, people... We forget here in the rest of the UK um, with our kind of two, three, two and a bit party system. You've got a system in, in, in Northern Ireland with five or six yeah, parties. Yeah, Every yeah. show like this in Northern Ireland has to have, has to have a much long, yeah, wider, nice. longer desk, um, uh, etc. Yeah. And so sometimes people grandstand. And I think Geoffrey Donaldson was seen as a serious figure who um, was prepared to work. So I think this will be a big, big blow to the moderates within the DUP. I was, going, I, I was going to ask you, uh, does he have any enemies? But he's in Northern Ireland, so Absolutely. of course he, he has. Well, he has a lot of enemies within his own party yeah, because yeah. the hardcore, there's a small party called the Traditional Unionist Voice who are chipping in from that side into the DUP's vote. And then on the other side, the Alliance Party, which is the cross-community party, 
uh, which takes votes from both Protestants and Catholics, has been on the rise, particularly amongst the middle classes uh, in, in Northern Ireland, who basically want to an end to sort of sectarianism um, uh, in their political choices. So the DUP is under a lot of pressure. And obviously, we have a general election in Northern Ireland, just as we will in the rest yeah. of the UK at some time in the next nine months.